Yo, Pascal and Carmen Souza. Welcome to the Voodoo Room. Were you flying in a plane in March or anything like that? Were you guys yeah, were flying? We were. So when did you yeah. actually stop? Was it in late March? Mar- March. We arrived in Lisbon on the seventh. Yeah. Okay. So. Of March. So, and you you're supposed to have the recording and start touring again. Yeah. So, and, you know, Italy, German, Austria, and so on. And everything started to be cancelled slowly. Uh, the first concert they were uh, cancelled was Italy. It was really in bad shape. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um was one of the first, and maybe the first in, in Europe. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It was, like, serious stuff Yeah. already. Yeah. And they start cancelled, cancelled, cancelled. We still have concerts booked for this year in Italy. Yeah. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. You are not. Uh, you don't want to be negative, but you don't also to take too much risks yeah. or give risks to others. You know, because when you you are an artist, you bring a lot of people. Yeah, that's right. You know, so you bring a lot of people. You, it's so many people that can be in risk. Yeah. So we don't know. We cannot just think about yourself in terms. Of, oh, I need to play. I need you know to make my life. You know, but you need to think first about others. You know. And that's tricky for some artists to understand this, you know. I've been talking with some other artists and, and they said, no, no, man, I don't care. We need to start working. Say, hey, be careful because it's not like that. We, we are professionals, but first of all, we are human beings. So be careful with this kind of thing, you know. I mean, you're not going to just buy a dozen uh, oranges and, and have a do- dozen oranges and it's going to fix you up. You know, this thing is something exactly. else, you know. Yeah. So it's yeah. very, very. That's, that's exactly what it is. You know? All we can do is laugh our way through it, man. That's all we can do. Well, you know? I know. Otherwise, yeah. we, we start to get in that mental, you know, yeah. place that you were talking about. Yeah. Not on tour. Well, crazy. And we're exactly. not on tour even, then we're, we're already in that place. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> what do you miss most about playing live? Oof. Oh God! <laughs> so many things. You everything, start. everything. I guess um, you know when we were in lockdown, there was like a, uh, there's this uh, Quest TV, which is like a Instagram page from Quincy Jones, and they were doing these live broadcasts of artists in their homes just doing music, and they invited us, and so we did it, and we were here in the studio and everything, and. Uh, the thing, the contact with the audience, you know, kind of you make a question or you, a joke or you're talking to, you know, the machine, you know, and there's no feedback because we kind of live of that feedback when we're on stage, you know, we're kind of, we kind of go with that and um, the vibe of the, the people and then finishing a song and you hear nothing, you know, you're just playing for yourself and the machine. Yeah. <laughs> It's really it it's, is. It's, it's so it, strange, you know. It is because we did we did a internet show with no crowd, and it was really like you say. It was really um, it was like being in a rehearsal room or something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know. But the thing is that you're expecting yeah. something, and you know you're kind of making the party by yourself. You know. Yeah. It's just you. I think I think you need some artificial crowd noise. You know, like you need the engineer to press mm-hmm. the button. Yeah, or something, yeah. We're know? gonna put it here, and then we. You have to find the sample, the right sample. Yeah, that's right. The right yeah. sample. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how did you two start working together? Well, it was almost 20 years now. Yeah. 20 years. So basically I was, yeah, 20 years. And now I was here in, in Portugal, in Lisbon, living on that time. And um, I had like a band. I have several bands on that time, but I was uh, doing MD for one band, specific band that was like um, gospel, like black gospel uh, music. And uh, I was doing auditions for singers and Carmen just showed up. And um, yeah, I, I told immediately to another guy, they said, man, we found already the person, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was totally like that in my point of view. And um, after that, we started working on that project and I had my own solo project also. So I bring Carmen to my own solo pro- project. I bring Carmen to all the projects. 
until we find that we need to do Carmen's project. So, you know, was, was of course, this is, was like a long journey, you know, and uh, we start doing the, your project like 15 years, maybe so. more. Okay. And, you know, after that, it was like just recording, you know, touring, you know, all like the world. We a blessing for us, you know, to do this kind of thing in our life, playing all over the world, you know, sharing music with people, you know, yeah, receiving a lot. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Receiving a lot from that. And you know? suddenly we're, yeah. we're deprived from, from that. That's it, you know, it's, it's kind of nourishment. When you play, you write, you need to, you give and receive. It's like life, it's like everything. And it's, it's a shame that we are kind of uh, stuck in this situation with the music um, and this, with all the projects, all the musicians are in the same and uh, hopefully will disappear soon, you know. Yeah, it's a, <clears throat> it's a t- tough bind that we're, we're all facing and, uh, but yeah, it puts yeah. a real um, fork in the road really, doesn't it, for, for everybody yeah. concerned, yeah. you know, because I, I can only imagine 20 years of playing together mm-hmm. um, Geez, you would have been all around the world together. You've travelled yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah, pretty much. Have, have you have you been yeah. to? Where haven't you been? Um, That's I it. Don't know. Uh, some some cities in Australia. Exactly. That's definitely <laughs> just went to Melbourne. <laughs> you know, which is was that the bloody first, long way. Was that, <laughs> was that the first time you you've been to Australia? That that show was the first. That time. was the first wow. time. Our first. Time. first and yeah, only wow. Time. Wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. We, bro- we broke you in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah, we did something. We, we didn't went to because you couldn't make it because we have another concert in like India, for instance. Mm-hmm. India. You, know, you went to, you know, to China several times, to Japan, to, you know. Uh, we haven't been to many places in in uh, Africa. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, Africa. We have been in Angola, Cape Verde. Yeah, and you know, different yeah. times, yeah. different and uh, North Morocco, Africa, Morocco, yeah, Morocco, North Africa. Algeria. You know, but you, United States touring all over the United States, Canada. You know, Europe a lot. Of course, we are based here. And uh, but you know, there's always a lot of places to still still so, missing. You know? yeah, so yeah. in the states, do you have a promoter or do you do it yourself? In the United States, what we do is it's like we actually is what we do in every every um, uh, continent. You know, we have like different promoters, different bookers. Uh, one label only, uh, the label for you know for the, the the CDs and everything. But in terms of promoters and bookers, we we work with different people. Local, local because they know better the market, so the you know that's much easier to work, right? United States actually we do the same, you know, like he works the North America market, you know, which is which is a lot, you know. Oh yeah. And we have been there several times, and it's it's great, but it's everything touring in the US is not easy, because coast to coast, you know, oh, you, yeah. you you take like eight hours on the airplane, you know. And you know, and one concert in Washington D.C., and suddenly you are in Seattle, and suddenly you have to come back again to New York, and uh, you go back to Chicago or to L.A. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, you never stop, you know, and you need to be strong, you know, physically. Yeah. We don't miss that. Yeah, you know, you don't, the traveling, you, the travel. you don't miss that <laughs> at all. No. I know it's those early flights, those crazy things, you yeah, know. I, I, airports. I know. Um, I've toured a lot as well, and I, when you're on the road consistently, that's hard. You go, you go a bit crazy, you know. Like mm-hmm. I, re- I remember I was in, at, we were in London, and we were doing a ten week tour of London, and I was stuck in a hotel, and mm-hmm. I thought I could handle it, you know. But after about four weeks, man, I could sense. That my I was going a bit stir crazy, you know, but yeah. I, but but then I sort of held. You have to make sure you don't go there. You know what I mean? Because you can, you can end right. up yeah, yeah, yeah. you can end That's up in it. some weird places, and um, you know because you you're not thinking straight. You're so tired and uh, you're so exactly. exhausted, and yeah. and it plays tricks on your mind, you know. And as yeah. a performer, you guys must be that must be a really tough thing to sort of front up each yeah. 
show and put out, you know, a hundred percent performance and uh, go to the next town, yeah. and you know, that's hard work. It involves a lot of discipline, I guess, from the years. Oh, because definitely. that's one of the things I learned. Especially, you know, the 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 voice is something very fragile. You yeah. know that. So it really involves discipline, you know, when you finish the concerts and you go straight home. And one of the things that we do is like, we never eat after the concerts, you know, because that's something that kills you. Yeah. You know, you go to bed at 2 a.m. and then you have an early flight at 4 a.m., you know, and yeah. that if, if, if you're not disciplined in that way, it's going to, you know, it's going to stop you down the track. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, um, it's it's the difference between doing ten concerts and you know being stable and doing ten concerts and in the middle of the third you're already you know yeah. killing yourself and that's that's one of the things you know and having everything very organized you know from home so we know that we go from here to there and it's it, it requires a lot of mental organization and a lot of knowing that you have to save yourself your energy for you know every little minute you know <laughs> when you have a chance you know planes and everything just sleep all the way through if you can sometimes it, it, your body is not very uh, it doesn't cope so much but you know the, as much as you can all the little breaks that you have just go to rest yeah that's where yoga comes in handy. If you know a little bit of yoga, yeah. you can exercise a little bit in the, you know, the departure lounge and uh, get ready to limber, you limber up and uh, you limber down in the, and go to sleep, you know. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I mean, meditation also, yeah. you know, good food, not yeah. bad food, which is like also uh, a plus. Yeah. And, uh, and it can be tricky yeah. because sometimes, you know, when it's time to eat, it, sometimes it's not, it's really late or something like that, and yeah. the, the options that you have are not the very healthy ones. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, know, you have to try your best. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to get a salad at two o'clock in the morning sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's super tough. It's super tough. It's tough. <laughs> you, you just find you know rubbish food to be yeah. honest. You know, <laughs> Stuff, yeah, so. and and you but, get you know it depends on the place actually that, that you go. You know some yeah. places they are more you know uh, ready for for these kind of times. You know in in the day, some others is totally crazy to find good food on yeah. the way to the airport or whatever. You know even hotels and stuff. You know. So when you when you do tour America, do you fly to the different states or you're driving? You do combination. Sometimes you drive and uh, sometimes you fly. And I prefer to drive, to be honest, you know, because at least you see a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, and the, the airplanes, they, are a lot, they have a big system on the, on the airplanes, you know, they work well. But, you know, taking like 10 for a tour in the US, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot. And the, also when we do it, we do it normally in, in a summer period. And the, f the festivals are very close to each other in yeah. terms of dates, so you cannot miss anything, so you don't have any day off. Sometimes it's you tricky, know? depends on the, the, the traveling day. Yeah. It's, that's also in Canada, the same. But if it's close, we'll prefer to drive. <laughs> yeah. In Canada, it's like you have one in Montreal, and after you have to go to Vancouver, mm. you know, and after you come to Toronto, you know, and it's like crazy, you know, or you go to uh, Calgary, you know. So when you're touring, kind of when you're touring, are you touring with the whole band? It's it's the drummer, Ilias, right? You no, know, the drummer normally when you tour in US, you use a Brazilian drummer. Okay, and a Brazilian, but he lives in New York for years and years now, and also a piano player uh, that he lives in in New York, Matt King and uh, Maurice Zotarelli on drums, and Matt King on the piano. And we we are used to play with them, you know. Yeah. And so that's when you do United States con uh, concerts uh, or tours. And um, in Europe, you are you play with Elias, the one that we we brought to Melbourne that you met. And um, you know, and so, and we play with an English piano player uh, called Ben Burrell. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's easier on these days to do this way, you know. And you go 
you like one week in advance and you do some rehearsals. Yeah. And, you know. You just you, you, just, you, you, you just pick before. you just pick up players as you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. Because we know them. So yeah. also, it's also so it's, a huge plus. It's not just a freelancer that you pick, yeah, you know. Yeah. So 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 the drummer and the piano player in New York, do they do the whole the whole tour with you? Like they go to Canada mm-hmm. and everything, yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah. That that's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> get get very tight, very, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. the band is tight. That's it's good. good. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, crazy players. They they really play good. I and, could imagine. And um, and good people, man. Yeah. Because for us, it's also very important to have good people on the road. Yeah. It's, it's your family. That's man. right. That's right. <laughs> you never know. In the U.S., all you have is donuts. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> That's it. Donuts and burgers, burgers and donuts. <laughs> are they are they special donuts and special burgers, or they're just pretty trashy stuff, or? No, just really specially sugary ones. <laughs> oh man! You know they have um, donut hamburgers. Oh my god! Really? Yeah. Don't... I never heard about <laughs> yeah, that. That's, a, that's, a, that's the worst combination. I know, right? That would give me another heart attack if I ate that. I know. <laughs> Trust me. And apparently, talking about heart attack. You know, that's that's uh, in LA, right? Yeah, there was a place called the Heart Attack Grill. Did you heard about no, this? I no, I haven't, no. So you would come in and they would take your pressure and you would be connected to like a machine, you know, measuring your blood pressure. And the burgers, you can imagine them. <laughs> One, two, three, see- four floors. Are you serious? And you- that's serious. I was, when they told me that, I was saying, no, man, come no, on, I'm not joking, <laughs> right? And that's actually a company. Did you, you eat know? at this place? No, no. at all. No. <laughs> we heard about them and you... Just you know, and apparently, if you do have a heart attack, you will get vouchers. <laughs> That's Crazy unbelievable. Stuff. I mean, people are probably purposely having heart attacks just to get the vouchers. Can you believe? Crazy stuff. They they came out on on the wheelchairs and stuff. <laughs> exactly. Crazy. When you come into the place, they will Man. sit you on a wheelchair. That's outrageous. That is outrageous. <laughs> it can only weird, it can weird. only happen in America, man. That's all I can say. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got. The best of everything and the worst of everything. <laughs> That's it. They, they, are, they, are, they have the edges of everything, yeah. you know. <laughs> There's yeah. choice. Yeah. You know? I mean. Biggest influence on your music. Who, who would that be? Oh. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a tricky one because, well, at least for me, Mm. Um, I'm going to get a little bit cheesy here because uh, for me, the biggest influence or would be the person that got me into music uh, in the first place, which, which is the gentleman over here. If he, if, he, if he didn't put me into doing music and discovering things, you know, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be here today, you know? Um, because after him, I discovered jazz, I discovered instruments and uh, composing and discovering my, my own voice, you know, in my instruments, in the guitar and the piano and everything. So um, I would say, but after that period, then, you know, comes, you know, all those jazz musicians, um, Cape Verdean musicians as well. Uh, my music has a lot of that, that influence from Cape Verde. That's my origin. And then the, the the jazz side, which is the improvisation side, and the, uh, those great guys like Miles Davis or John Coltrane or Keith Jarrett or I don't know, so many. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it's 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 tricky because we when you are looking for it depends on the season that you ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> but because you ask it today, it's, it's it's complicated for me to define exactly exactly which uh, uh, artists now they are the most uh, influenced in my my sound or my music. But I would say the same, which is like traditional music from uh, the Portuguese side. It's very important for us because it's our roots. Uh, Jazz is also because of freedom, you know, that the, the jazz brings to the music. Not exactly traditional jazz only, but any kind 
and we mix our music is a, a big mix you know mix a lot of traditional music with jazz but i would say on these days that we we are much more um concentrated in ourselves as in that in carmen's music what influence the most for me is her you know what she is today what she's trying to looking for and I'm, I'm following that and I'm just bringing that to the music you know and that's the the, 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 the concept of these days but you know back in time you, you know you have to listen to this and this or maybe you have to listen because you like it and you just bring a little bit of the colors of this the artists that you are listening and everything you know, but our music is very different. That's that's sometimes the problem to define, you know, our music. And also we don't know how to define. That's actually the, the reality. You know, it's hard to, to, to define exactly our music. It's so tough, yeah. you know. Journalists, every time that we do a, a release, they ask us, oh, define your music or because they don't know. Yeah. And I said, I don't know to, to define to It's so hard. And it's not like... A, it's serious. It's, it's real. It's hard to define the music. I, yeah. I, I think for me, when I <clears throat> listen to your music and I've seen you perform, it's yeah. it, it's just it's got it's like a um, a mixed salad. It's got everything in it. You know, it, right. it's got right. it's right. got jazz. It's got Creole. It's got um, you know blues. Right. It's got soul. It's got yeah. ballads. It's got it's got it all. You know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's and true. That's <laughs> true. Actually, the reality. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's it, that, that's true, and that's complicated for us to, yeah. to just to, call it a mixed also salad. Deal with all that. Yeah. Just just say no. it's a mixed salad next time they ask you. you <laughs> exactly. Know? It's just a mixed salad. <laughs> a mixed salad. <laughs> you want to talk talk about salads? Yeah. So I I didn't forgot the, the olive oil. Ah yes. Yes. Oh yes. yes. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I, I think I'm still searching for the volume. It's like sound. I'm still searching for my sound. I'm still searching for the best. Olive but oil. have you have you um, found any olive oil that you can recommend? Um, yeah, but no label. No label. You know, it's kind of independent, independent um, farms and companies. Well, that's... they have it in the, in, the, in, the, in the center of Portugal in the countryside. Man, that olive oil is crazy. And the other one that I found crazy. It, that we are, we always go. It's in Milan, in Italy, uh, at the Blue Note. They serve you the olive yeah. oil is amazing in there. Is amazing. It, is it is it Italian olive oil? And that one, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. And that one is is a fancy, fancy olive oil. Yes, as a label. I don't remember now. We have a picture of it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I'm, a, you know, I still buy that sal- salvo. Is that how you pronounce it? Sal- Salvo. Salvo. Oh, so the, 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 the Ogalo or? No, no. I, oh, I, the Portuguese it, one. Yeah, it was a Portuguese oh, okay. one, but for some reason, I've never seen that brand here. Yeah, the one that you sent us. Is that yeah, right? You've never seen picture. it? You've never seen the brand in Portugal? No. Because no. I, it's probably just for international. But I saw the label in different places. Yeah, because I you sent me a picture of the ones with the chicken on the label right and i went to the portuguese shop and i showed him that and he looked at me and he said no one imports this in australia right and i said and then i tried online and then the company would not ship it to australia right because you had to buy you had to buy a ton of it for them to ship it you know they're not going to ship one one to me you know so i'm very disappointed it was like even with this technology we got, you cannot get Portuguese olive oil. <laughs> exactly. That's a it's disaster. Australia man. is too far. I know. I know. It is far. <laughs> I know, right? How far is Australia from everything, man? We're in the ass end of the world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, but that's an amazing place, man. Yeah. I know. Trust me. I know. It's crazy, it's- right? You're still based in London, uh, but you're back in Portugal, obviously, because of the lockdown. Um, mm-hmm. And you said, what, you, you're looking at the end of the year to go back to London? Are you, so you're going to base yourself permanently in London again, or is that just a springboard to Europe for you? Yeah, that's it. You know, we're still deciding decide what we're going to do it next, because London, it's a great place to be, right? 
uh, cultural, everything is there. Uh, is location wise for touring also is great. Now, Lisbon is is our first home, right? And it's much more relaxed. Um, we have the studio, we have this project now in in in, this, in Lisbon. So you are still deciding if you still are doing this, you know, uh, double uh, thing in Europe, which is living in London and living in in the half part half time in Lisbon, half time in London. But it's, I think we're going to keep it so far. We're going to keep it until maybe one year more and see what's going to happen, you know, uh, because things are changing, changing so much. We don't know exactly what you're going to do, really. You know, and the, also the market is changing so much. So we have to decide which, which will be the best decision, really. Yeah, so um, what made you develop your own record label, Theo? Well, independence. Yeah. You know, first of all, uh, because an artist needs to, you know, to be independent of, you know, what you hear sometimes. So you still do your thing, you know, and as an artist and and also as a producer, there's a two different point of views, you know, but uh, I think it's very important to keep this, you know, and, um, you know, to set up something like that is, is serious, you know, because you involves a lot of investments. A lot of work, you know, you have to have a vision also, right? Um, and uh, I'm still learning, you know, on this process because also I'm a musician and I'm, first of all, a musician. So I need also to look to my side of uh, as an artist and to play and practice and then keep on top of it. And uh, But I believe that uh, the, the, the market needs more um, independent artists, in my opinion, because if you put all together, imagine that you have 100 or 200 labels, they are independent, artists, they are independent, whatever kind of, uh, you name it, whatever kind of company or collective or, or this kind of stuff, I think is a, is a good combination for two or, two or three reasons. First is union, you bring people together that they share the same um, vision or pretty much the, the same vision. So as an artist, um, the second thing is you educate people instead of being uh, put your music on the on the on the market and just professionals and business people start bringing the music and just you know inform the crowd the TVs the radios whatever what music is about and sometimes it's not about that that is just the commercial side of the music so if you you have it's kind of a mission you know if you have all these combinations with, uh, you know, good collectives, good, you know, um, labels, good bookers, you know, and they, they really know what is they are dealing with. Sometimes they are, you know, these people on the business, they are dealing with the business, not with the, the subject to sell something, you know. And that's, I think, you need more, more musicians and more artists that some they don't have ability to put everything together. Some they are not very organized, you know, artists, some, they, they have a lack of organization sometimes, or sometimes they are, they don't have the strength and the courage to to move to a project, right, like this. But uh, I think we need more people like that, you know, engineers, you know, sound engineers, for instance. Uh, it's very important to have a good relation with sound engineer yeah. and an artist, you know, and sometimes say, oh, I'm just a sound engineer, or I have, I'm the artist, you know, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, you guys belong to the same team in, on stage. You know, saying and Sam saying it's like if you don't have that communication, understanding, man, there's something wrong. Yeah, that's you know? right. Or it's not on the full potential. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, how many how many bands do you have on your? Do you still have your label? Yeah, we, we because of this uh, studio uh, that calls this is sessions the sessions that we have in Lisbon, we are now also because we have like partners that work work with us. Basically, I do the production. I found the artists do the production. Some they come to me and send me emails, or some they send me maquettes or demos or stuff, and I listen to the music and I decide okay, I'm going to produce these ones, or I'm not going to produce that that ones. And uh, after I'll show the, the the 
the music uh, to to the, the, the partners that I have for labels to you know to do the distribution of the CDs and you know all the promotional side. It's like a team. It's not a big team. It's a team, solid team that we work with that team, which is a German label. And um, also our projects, the ideas that we have, for instance, I'm, Carmen, she has the solo project. Now I have my also uh, solo project. And, you know, so, so different, different music, uh, very different music. Um, and, you know, it's like I do a lot of collections for uh, Lusophone music, which is music from, uh, you know, uh, from Africa, but the Portuguese side of it. We have the Francophony at the Lusophony, which is the Portuguese side, like uh, places like Angola, Mozambique, Guinea, um, Cape Verde, you know, and we bring them together. They, we, we join uh, the musicians in Portugal, in Lisbon, and we do a record. That's actually what I'm doing, I uh, did last week, and I'm still doing this week, you know. And, uh, you know, send the material to the label, the bookers that they are in France, in England, you know. And we have the manager, because this project is three people, which is Pat Pascal, she's the manager, myself as a producer, and Carmen also, she's the artist, he kind of uh, choose the artists and everything all together, myself with her. Sometimes also we do um, production together, you know. It's good because it's a different side. We are not talking about our music, mm -hmm. you understand? So you learn a lot from there. Yeah, for sure. And do you pick up artists from Cape Verde still? Carmen, yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a very nice artist that we are producing. Yeah, um, that this this place kind of brought him to us, yeah. and it's really beautiful the 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 the, the magic that this this um, place is already bringing together because we want to bring artists from every everywhere. And, you know, you can be also painters and paint with the music and, you know, all kinds of things and uh, poets and all of that. And uh, um, we, we, we were lucky to, to, to be in touch. And he's like this very special um, musician, you know, we yeah, call him the, the troubadour. He's like a Cape Verdean troubadour. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been, you know, developing his, his uh, music and recording it. It's beautiful, you know, to find other things and to, to see other, other artists, you know, flourish. It's really, really nice. And is it traditional music or is it contemporary music? It's traditional, okay. um, but he mixes a lot of different traditional music. So he brings uh, things from Cape Verde, of course, and then from Senegal as well. And then he also makes up his own language, you know, mixing, you know, Cape Verde with sometimes Portuguese and Senegal. And, you know, it's really interesting. So Senegal, is that a French colony or used to be a French colony? It is, it, is. it is a French colony. It's right next to Cape It's right next to Cape Verde, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So he sp he would he he sings in French and Portuguese. Not not really Frenchy. Uh, he he makes up his own language. Ah, wow. Uh, so the dialect from Senegal, like a dialect. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty trippy. Yeah. You pick up some cra crazy people along the way. That's for sure. You know. When you, when, uh, yeah, you, when, yeah. when you open it's good it's, it's good, good to have some crazy yeah yeah totally you know? then. <laughs> I remember it's very provocative that way yeah yeah I remember I did a uh, record with this First Nations person from America mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> he was bringing people off the street man no no rehearsal no nothing if he met someone right. down the street who was in First Nation Australian or something he'd say hey, bro right you can you play an instrument yeah yeah i can play an instrument come and play on my record so i'd be this is the first album i ever worked on and people right. would be waiting oh. in the foyer and i'm going well, who are these people he goes they're playing on my album i said have they rehearsed do they know the material <laughs> no it doesn't matter they'll just play i couldn't oh, believe man. it man i was pulling my hair out he goes you've got to understand this is how we do things you know and I'm like, right, right, right. I don't understand. You got to rehearse. <laughs> another level, man. It's another level. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what's it's the what's the because the Africans they are very uh, spontaneous, right? Yeah, yeah. Spontaneous, so they, you know, yeah. They can play, man. That's it. You just got to go off the flow. 
exactly. Yeah. So what was the be- what's the best festival you've worked at? Oh, so many mm-hmm. good festivals, so many good reference. I would say uh, the one that I enjoy a lot was Monterey. Oh. <laughs> in the United States, yeah. And Same. that festival, they have everything in there that was like your reference as a you know, student. And suddenly you are there playing your music. So it was like, like whoa. Was, you know, and it's so, that, so far from, from your own. Yeah. You know? So, so we had actually in that that we had a very good experience also, yeah. which was also a plus. When you arrive, we were on tour, United States again, touring. And uh, when we arrived, the guys from the festival they were there to receive us and say, "Oh, we don't have the, the dressing room ready for you guys." And I said, "Okay, well, so how long will it take because you are so tired?" And I said, "Maybe let me just talk with another guy." And, he was talking with another guy. He said, I found another one. Can you share the, the dressing room? And I said, yeah, man, we are tired. We're going to share the dressing room. <laughs> we no just want to share. You know, <laughs> I want to sit while I ever dropped our stuff there, you know, because the sound check was in one hour. So, and he said, okay, let's do it. And when we were approaching the, 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 the door, you were listening to a band and they were killing. And you were looking to each other and saying, man, those guys are killing. And we... As far as, as more, more close the door, more loud. So we realized that somebody was doing rehearsal on the dressing room. Was it because the dressing rooms were like little barns because the Montreal Jazz Festival is like in a big uh, garden, yeah. you know? And so they put the dressing rooms in little barns and the bands, they, they come and they can rehearse on those little places. And we were supposed to stay in this. So basically we get in and <laughs> Herbie Hancock was our uh, artist that were sharing the dressing room with us. They were doing the rehearsal before they went on stage, you know, and they said, whoa. And so the piano player was like mad, start filming, <laughs> and, you know, and you were like, and, and you know, we were sharing, sharing the same food and everything. It was like amazing. You know, that's a, that's you an know. amazing experience. That's an amazing yeah, experience. Well, and the guys, they were so humble and so, you know, yeah. cool with us. Yeah. And how many people would attend something like that in, in the Monterey Jazz Festival? Oh my God, so many stages! It's, it's a lot of stages, um, but you know, thousands, thousands, thousands. Yeah, yeah, thousands. You know, mm-hmm. well, on that note, I thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. it's been fantastic thank talking you. with you both, man. It's good to see you again, Carmen and Theo. Yeah, that's a great to see, great to see you. Too. Thank you to to call us and you know invite us. Okay. okay, take okay. care, take it easy. Bye. All the best. Bye. Bye. You must have cast a spell.